I'm Sebastian Awad with the Secure Systems Lab at NYU, um, working on the Uptane project for software update security in automobiles, uh, with alongside Southwest Research Institute and uh, University of Michigan Transportation Research Institute. So I'm going to tell you just a little bit about the system. Um, uh, there'll be another presentation that I'll show a link to at the bottom that will uh, that will go into much more detail about Uptane itself. Um, the purpose for this talk is, is mostly just to show the demo. Um, so we're going to be dealing with uh, updates occurring in vehicles. Um, and for these purposes, we separate uh, a primary and secondary uh, role for the electronic control units, ECUs, in the vehicle. Um, this Raspberry Pi here is going to be playing the role of a of the primary, will uh, retrieve uh, metadata and images from the server and distribute it to these other secondaries, the secondaries in the vehicle, uh, like this one, who is going to play the part of, the, of a friendly transmission control unit um, that, uh, that will also perform the full suite of uh, ver verification checks in Uptane. Both of them will. Uh, there, there is a lesser set, uh, there a partial verification uh, version of the client intended for much weaker uh, ECUs, but uh, we won't get into that here. Um, so aside from these two, who are currently performing, by the way, uh, looping updates continuously, every couple seconds they, they, the primary checks for instructions from the director and the secondary checks for instructions from the primary. Um, so we'll show you the service side, or at least two of the components on the service side. The others are silent and less interesting. So. Uh, on the left, we have a w basic web front end that we whipped together for the uh, image repository, or for the folks at Southwest Research Institute whipped together mostly, uh, for the image repository. Uh, and on the right, we have the front end for the director repository. Um, the image repository will store images, uh, firmware, uh, and the director repository basically stores instructions to vehicles as to what in ECUs should, which electronic control units in the, in the vehicle uh, should install what pieces of firmware or updates if they're differential. Um, okay, so uh, with that note, uh, I think I'll issue the first update, uh, just a normal update. I'm going to tell our friendly transmission control unit to go from firmware version 1.0 to version 1.1. So it's a little clunky, but here we go. I'm going to go from 1.1 or 1.0 to 1.1. Okay. That's issued the instruction. So the primary should now be retrieving that instruction from the director, uh, as well as validating the information uh, about the firmware that should be installed with the image repository. Uh, there it is. Um, and then the secondary should retrieve that instruction from the primary and uh, install. Great. So normal update successful. Uh, so next, uh, we're going to do a suite of attacks. Um, so let's assume, let's assume that a malicious party has uh, decided that they want to install uh, bad firmware on the vehicle. They want to install something that allows them to monitor audio, perhaps, uh, whatever it is, some, some attack on the vehicle. Uh, they have decided to uh, intercept traffic between the director and the vehicle itself. Uh, the primary in the vehicle, let's say, um, and uh, replace the firmware image with a firmware image that's been edited for their own purposes, some arbitrary modification. Uh, so if they were to do that, which we will simulate like that, then the primary who retrieves that, uh, in this case it was kind of quick, the primary who retrieves that will detect that the firmware does not match the signed trustworthy metadata. That it, has, that it has validated, and it will refuse to keep the, the firmware. Uh, it, won't, it won't present it to the secondaries, it just rejects it. Um, so that effect has, uh, th that, that attack basically has no effect. Um, so now I will undo it. So I'll, I'll say we take the man in the middle out of the picture again, and we'll be resuming normal, normal updates. So let's say the attacker has wised up in a small way and now is aware that they can't simply provide uh, arbitrary instructions that they've modified um, to, the, uh, to the vehicle because they don't have the keys for it. Um, so they're going to instead take old instructions that they've previously captured. 
Um, so they've listened and you know, they capture instructions to install some piece of uh, firmware and much later after an exploit is discovered, let's say, they want the vehicle to return to that firmware or stay indefinitely at that firmware. Um, so they want to, they'll re this is a replay attack. So first I'm going to set up the conditions for the replay attack. Let's say the, uh, there's a new version that's released um, uh, of some firmware uh, or, or just metadata for that matter. Um, now the primary has retrieved that information, it keeps chugging along, uh, and now we'll conduct the attack uh, where we regress to a previous version of the, of the metadata. We try to provide that to the vehicle. So click, and in a moment we should see the primary detecting that something is wrong, that there is a piece of metadata that is out of date. Uh, error scrolled by just a moment ago, but you'll get a banner in a moment. Right. Uh, so the primary has detected this is a replay attack, and it has rejected the metadata update. It will not install anything that is not trustworthy in that way. So now let's undo that, go back to the most recent version of the metadata. In a moment, the primary should stop complaining. Let's make sure the attack is undone. Yes, it was. Okay. So the next attack we'll do is, uh, let's say, much more ambitious and dangerous. Uh, so suppose someone isn't just intercepting traffic, but actually takes over the server, the director server. Um, they, they've gotten in through some, uh, through some hole, uh, and they, they've managed to take over the, the system. Um, they have access to all, to all the keys that are stored on there. Um, which I, mean, I won't go into the top details, but might be a variety of different levels of keys. Um, and whether they've been able to copy the keys or they're just uh, instructing the, the system to issue new metadata and sign using, even if it's the keys are in HSM or something, if they can use the keys, that's still quite a threat. So, so we'll have the attacker uh, seize the keys, sign new metadata, um, about th that validates their own uh, malicious firmware on the director and have that sent to the car now. So your director repository has been compromised. Um, the primary is going to reject this as well because the arbitrarily modified uh, firmware is uh, still not validated by the other repository, the image repository, which is, I guess you could say, the more sober, slow body, generally. Um, <coughs> So for that reason, the primary will not ever install this either. Okay, so now let's, let's go even further. Let's say that some, either the image repository itself has been compromised, or more likely, since that those, the, the keys signing targets there are unlikely to actually be on that repository, um, let's say they've compromised some supplier key. I'm gonna turn that down. So they've seized, They've seized the keys uh, of some developer who's working on the firmware updates for uh, this part in the vehicle. Um, maybe they found them. Uh, well, it doesn't matter how they found them, but they've retrieved the keys, let's say. So if this happens, then they sign the matching metadata that, uh, that also validates this on the image repository side. That is going to be substantially more dangerous. Um, and the primary now will see uh, validated metadata from both the image repository and the director repository by all the necessary trusted parties, indicating that the image, the, the firmware that it's been instructed to install is the correct one and that it's trustworthy. So it will happily rec receive this um, and it will distribute it to the secondaries who will uh, install it or the, the appropriate secondary who will install it. So I think in a moment you should, yes, there we go. So the secondary is now compromised. Um, there's no way that it would have detected this, it's just compromised, so our splash screen is for flavor. Um, it's now installed arbitrary software. Um, so all of this, so if an attacker has gone to this, this level, um, seized keys from both, from both repositories, uh, even maybe an offline key from a developer for the image repository, uh, for the appropriate part, uh, then, I mean, well, you're, you're it's a difficult scenario to deal with, um, but tough and thereby obtain uh, provides a mechanism for reliably revoking compromised keys um, using a, the root role, which is a rarely used feature of the, uh, I shouldn't say rarely used, which is a, a feature of the system that is rarely used to sign metadata. It only when a, high, a top level uh, key is, has been compromised does the root role need to come into play and sign the revocation of that. 
Um, all clients start with that root of trust, and so when that root of trust issues a new instruction, um, it it will be uh, it will override um, the use of those keys um, thereafter. So we'll start by uh, revoking keys on the director repository, um, which is going to take a little bit of time in this demo, uh, twenty seconds or so, I think. Uh, and once that is done, uh, you will see that the, direct, the, primary, uh, the primary will now be receiving good valid metadata from the director and uh, as far as it knows, good valid metadata from the image repository, but in the latter case, the image repository is still hosting the, the attacked uh, compromised data. So they don't match, so the primary will refuse to, download, will refuse to retain the file. Um, so now if we also do the recovery, let's say we revoke the developer key that we've discovered is now uh, compromised. And when that's done, the primary will now be able to install uh, software updates normally again. Um, so, uh, right. So next, uh, after, once that's done, uh, we're going to uh, do one more attack. Um, where we simply demonstrate uh, the efficacy of the of the, the key revocation. So here you, uh, yeah, I won't explain. I guess the tough details, um, but I'll, I will wait until the update is complete. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So the next attack will be the attacker trying to sign metadata with that compromised key again. Um, newer metadata to sort of suggest. Oh, ignore that other uh, that other guy. Um, here, here's the metadata that that is more recent than that and valid. And uh, you should install this piece of this piece of uh, firmware. Uh, so when that's done, uh, the primary will detect that that is a revoked key already, uh, and it will disregard it. And even if you were to perform this on both repositories again, uh, it wouldn't. It would the primary wouldn't accept it because it's a, it's no longer a trustworthy key. Uh, according to the root role, which uh, can be trusted ab above these other roles. So we should receive, we should see defended repeatedly. Uh, it's all good, great. So I'll undo that attack too and leave the system in a normal state. And that covers all the attacks that are in this demo. Um, there are a variety of other attacks um, that the system also protects against. and. Uh, the design documents will cover that mostly. Uh, the presentation, the other presentation might also cover those. Um, but I think that's it for us, for today at least. So, thanks.